Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Yes, Syl Sebastian back with us. We're here talking about the Mornis Project and uh, two men today and so much more. Looking fabulous as always. Our author, by the way, we got to plug the new book as well as so much that you're doing to help yes. so many yes. people change their yes. lives. Tell us yes. a little bit about who you are and what you're doing with the Mornis Project before we begin today. That's what I'm doing every day. We talk <laughs> about and share about Mornis culture, right? I mean, the Mornis Project is uh, I put that up on the website, something I started a long time ago, just to share and to develop and to connect to Mornis, to explore Mornis, what, what is Mornis, what's it all about. But it's developed since then into a culture because it's an alternative paradigm and it's very, very different way of living. It's, it's an alternative to the typical superiority paradigm, as I've mentioned before. Uh, and one of the, the things about a, a culture is that a, a culture has a language yeah. and and Mornis, Mornis culture has its own language. It's, it's the language of conceptionality, mm -hmm. which is thinking in conceptual terms rather yeah. than thinking in detailed, specific terms. And that means connecting to the overview, to the abstract. And this brings us to this profound, profound, profound conception that I want to share today, which is attunement. Uh, it is just... The most, uh, I, the most mourners that you can think, really. This is what mourners is all about. And, and so attunement, what I like about attunement is that it says what it is in the mm -hmm. name itself, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, think of, okay, like somebody says, well, in music, attunement is important. But if you think of attunement just on its own, well, then you don't think music, Maybe. right? Yeah, or at least yeah, in the yeah, context yeah. of mourners. You're not thinking music. So when you think of attunement in a spiritual context, in, in a context of life, in, in the context of the world, of the universe, of any deity that you, or religious context, or spirit, you know, uh, any, any kind of a context that has your most mourners for you personally in it. And now you are living in attunement with the grand scheme of things, right? Hmm, so let me, let me give an example. Sure. A practice example of attunement so let's imagine that you know you you are you are connected to energies and forces in the world uh, via threads let's say like like a, like an energy thread or string right and those forces are all moving now they don't all move in the same direction yeah. but there's a general movement to these to the way the universe works right so now, if you decide, let's say you, you're, moving in, you're moving south, just for argument's sake. Okay. And, uh, or at least all these forces, the, the conglomeration, you know, they balance each other out and there's a movement into some way, right? Um, you know, the, the average movement. And you decide, no, I want to go north or west or east. Well, that's going to take more energy from you, right? True. Because now you've got those forces working against you. Mm -hmm. So this is what attunement is. Ah. It is working in harmony with those forces, but you have to be aware of them and be paying attention to them, huh? because they aren't usual things. They, they, it's not our typical stuff like, well, when you think of forces, you might think of a car or something mm -hmm. like that, or the wind. No, I'm talking about energy and movement in terms of what is what is right for you. And this is what the magic of attunement is. So let me back up just a little bit. Attunement. Uh, is the end of way of impeccability. And way of okay. impeccability is a life change, self change program, right? Okay. It's a very big deal. And it is the core, the foundation of bonus culture. Got because it. way of impeccability sets you up to live in a way where, of course, it's way of impeccability, where impeccability is the key to whatever you're doing. And what is impeccability? Impeccability is best use of energy. That's okay. the core definition of impeccability. There, there are a bunch of others, and we'll, we, we can talk about impeccability. I have a whole show just on impeccability. Uh, but that's the core. That's the core. Best use of energy. So what if you take that to its ultimate extreme? Well, uh, for instance, best use of energy in just a very mundane uh, thing, it's just being thorough about things you're doing, being diligent about things, not being sloppy, not being careless, being cautious, uh, mm -hmm. being deliberate, etc. Right? 
and things like patience, honesty. These are all great uses of energy, you know. A lot of people think, oh, you know, they're going to lie or cheat or whatever, and they're going to score something. But they pay for it later. They're not thinking in the overall, right? That's yeah. that's how they get into trouble. You know, with your children, right? I mean, you totally. know, kids, they will make up stories sometimes and explain to them and they realize, okay, this is not good, good idea. You know, selfishness is the classic example of short-term thinking. You know, for instance, you, you, you think of the typical examples. I have a bag of sweets and I open it and I sit there eating and all my friends are around me and I don't share with any of them because I want to eat all the sweets. Well, the next thing that I know, I've got no more friends, right? <laughs> so you may benefit in the short term by getting the sweets, but in the long term, you lose from not having any friends. And of course, next time they have sweets, they don't want to share with you, right? Mm -hmm. or potentially Very so. true, yeah. Right. yeah. So it, it's not actually beneficial to you, which makes the word selfish the way it's understood to be oxymoronic, actually. <laughs> right? By the way, we are, hold on. Was that Bino who just popped in? Well, let's Someone hope so. Um, let's and, hope so. And, nope, nope, it's gone. Not yet. Right. No, well, we're hoping okay. Bina will come and join us. Always good to have Bina. Bina has wonderful extra perspectives to add. And she's full of mourners. It's quite wonderful. As is Jill. As is Jill. That's why we enjoy mourners. So, yeah. <laughs> mourners is everywhere, by the way. Mourners is. is everywhere. It's not something you have to acquire. It it's is. something you have to connect to. Yeah. And this is the magic. Now, let's get back to attunement. So, Go I was it. saying about, uh, about our energy usage. If we take impeccability to its ultimate we say, well, I want to be use my own personal energy well mm -hmm. to the best effect. But how do I know what's best for me? Well, I go with my gut. But... Right. But here's the problem, right? I, mm. I have a very wonderful story about this. It's called The Gift of Intent. And, and, and in this, the young man is pondering things as is his habit. And he comes to the conclusion that that the, the, the goal, the ideal of self-wisdom is flawed. Yeah. He says, why? Because no matter You're how right. much uh -huh. wisdom you may acquire, you still will not necessarily or not even be close to having all of the possible wisdom that there is, right? Yeah. All of the information available to you. Because we don't have access to future information, for instance. Yeah. So I'm, I'm limited in how well I can decide for myself what's best. So the young man says, well, the only way that I can possibly connect to what's best for me is to connect to the universe. Because the universe has access to universal information. Yeah. Right? Now, the, the young man says the universe. Now, depending on your where you're at, you may say spirit, you may say source, you may say God, Allah, yeah. Buddha, Krishna, Brahma, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right, it, 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 the terminology is not specifically important. Now, I, I know some religious people are going to argue with me very strenuously about this, but that's a very limited view. When you think conceptually, you're talking about the same thing, yes, in, in its essence, conceptually, in the abstract, it's the same thing, right? So it doesn't matter. But now the young man says, well, uh, if I want to connect and know what's best for me, I have to connect to the universe and live in connection with the universe. And okay. this is where attunement started, right? So this is what attunement is. It is a living in tune with the greater flow of things, the greater movement of energies, which we aren't directly aware of in our everyday lives unless we pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all it is, is really shifting your attention to say the things that happen in my everyday life. Let me look at them with a different eye, right? With that conceptual abstract eye, right? So uh, take, uh, let's say, trying to think of, of typical things that happen in our life. Well, I, I, you know, sometimes it's very small, trivial things. But but usually the things that, that that alert us that something is from the universe is because it's anomalous in some way. Not always, because you get force of circumstance that's a part yeah. of life. It's, well, you fall in the river and you get swept along and you wash up on the bank down the river. Well, that's where you are now, right? And you've got to deal with that. It's just very simple force of circumstance, right? So, and that's... That's when you look at those, we'll start with those and we'll come to anomalies in a moment. So force of circumstance is mm -hmm. very profound. 
Now, for instance, force of circumstance, people lose their job. They end up in a relationship where they uh, they should transition, but they don't, and they have a breakup and stress and blah. Yeah. But if you do make that shift of perspective and ask the question, how is this good for me? Now, it's a very important question. The wording is very important. Most people want to say, well, that wasn't nice. That was unpleasant. That was horrible. They don't think that, that it can be good. Yeah. Good and nice are not the same. No. If I said to you, Jill, you've got to choose for your children what's good for them or what's nice for them. What do you choose? I choose what's good for them. Of course. Of course. Yeah. You have to. So good and nice, they can go together and they, they, that's up to us. But we have to decide. Right. So when we, when we experience sometimes things that aren't nice on the surface, but you look a little closer. And you say, wow, that was actually good for me. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And, and, and now you like the learning, you like the growing, you like this gift of goodness. Oh, now it becomes nice. Right? So, so true. Yeah, yeah, I may have fallen in, in the river or whatever, and it was a bit cold. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, it was really good. Now, I know many times that this has happened where people, for instance, have, have uh, changed their relationship or their job or whatever, a very profound life change that forced them to really change. And it turned out to be the best thing ever. Right? And I think I, I may have told you when, when I was a, a teenager, I did a study. I went and asked people who had experienced severe trauma. Yeah, like uh, their children dying or their spouses mm -hmm. dying ahead of time, right? Um, you know, way earlier than, than not, not like when they were, uh, were, were old. Uh, and, and, and I asked them, I said, how do you feel about this incident now? Right. I, I, I didn't, I was very cautious. I was very cautious. because I didn't want to influence the results, uh, you know, with tester bias. Right. Cause if you say, you know, if you think back of it now, uh, do you see any good in it? Oh, you see, and then they're like, well, mm. no. So I was very neutrally. I said, how do you feel about this now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got the most profound answers. <laughs> I remember the one where they said to me, the day that should die, that was the best day ever. <laughs> and, you know, this was a very conservative community that I was in, and adults swearing in front yeah. of children, absolute no-no. It was complete no-no, right? And I was 14 at the time, and like, wow, <laughs> you know? But, but because I was so earnest in what I was doing, it was such an unusual thing, you know? I went and asked, the, I, I made sure to, to get them privately, right? Uh, that they were completely honest with me and they were able to talk about it. And the very next thing this, this, this widow said to me, but don't you tell it there, tell a soul I said that. I will deny what? that I said it. Right? They, and they all said this to me, every single one, right? Which is quite fascinating that uh, they were completely honest with me, but said, don't, don't tell anybody I said wow. something. Right? They really asked me very earnestly. I mean, that particular widow said, you know, she threatened me if I said <laughs> but that was still an age where adults would smack children. doesn't matter whether it was your children or not, right? Well, anyway, a different culture at the time. Yes. But one lady in particular was stuck out to me beside that particular uh -huh. widow too. Her daughter had died of an illness, a uh -huh. very long, drawn-out illness, uh, uh -huh. uh, cancer, something like that. I don't remember the specifics. But, uh, you know, and her daughter was still relatively young. I don't remember exactly how young. But she said, the day my daughter died was the best day of my life. Oh. What's her? Now, you're a mother. And you say, and, and, and I was like, wow. Wait, you know, but... This was tremendous. And so she explained. She said, you know, that was the day that we were all <clears throat> released. We were all set free. That is the words that she used. She were, we were, that was the day we were all set free. Oh, my gosh. Because the daughter had been suffering for so long. And exactly. everybody was suffering. And she said, the day that was, we were all set free. You know, it was the best day. Because, you know, it could have gone on for who knows how long, you know. And so, anyway, my, my, the, the key point was that after time, those people had realized there was a mourners to this. Yeah? And it had changed their lives very profoundly. And so they looked at things differently and they shared that with me. The profound thing, too, was that they didn't share it with everybody. Mm. That, that was the amazing thing because the culture didn't make space for it, which is mm -hmm. another reason why I share mourners culture. 
Because when you have a culture that makes allowance for this, that where this is cool, this is okay, this is good to share this type of thing, and these perspectives are part of the culture, then you don't have this inadvertent hypocrisy, which those people suffered from. It was a stress for them not to be able yeah. to say. One of the reasons they talked so openly to me, because they saw that they could, right? They were aware that they could. So earnestness, my earnestness opened them up and they were able to share. And they were very grateful for being able to share, by the way. You know, uh, even though I was a teenager, it didn't matter. Somebody to unburden to, to share. So now those are force of circumstance, which is like a little subset of attunement. Mm -hmm. But now, they, well, you know, I'm not falling into rivers. I'm not losing my job or whatever. I'm not, not having anything directly like that. I mean, I've had some profound, magical force of circumstance in my life. <laughs> and that gift of instant, intense story came uh, from getting out of the restaurant business, which was very, very difficult to do. Uh, it was Because it was it's just when you're in it and it's going, it's good. It, it's very hard to leave something that has a future, right? Very difficult. Uh, but that's a long story. Uh, well... <laughs> Now, 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 there's force of circumstance, but it started, yeah. well, when we left, then it took on a force of, but it started with an anomaly. And here's a great example of an anomaly. So I had the restaurant, and I was a young man at the time in my mid-20s, which was very young to own a restaurant, right? And uh, it was a busy restaurant, and it's basically in, it's in Seapoint, uh, Cape Town, which is like Manhattan and Malibu mixed together, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. So we get, and it was, it was a very popular tourist place at the time. This was in the uh, mid to late 80s when I had the restaurant. Uh, it's different in South Africa now. I mean, there's still a lot of tourism, but then in that particular place was lots of tourism. So we had people, you know, wealthy people from all over the world traveling would come around, right? Uh, and, 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 at any rate, so I, it's a very busy restaurant, and we had queues at the door, and you know, I basically was the host, and I'm always very busy making sure everything is run. But still, every now and then, it, this happened at at, at at a certain point in time. Uh, the first time that it happened, I'm just walking past the table, and bang, my arm gets gripped by somebody sitting there, uh. but like this, like a clamp, right, right there on the spot. <laughs> I can still feel it, right. <laughs> Now they grab me. Ah, now they're stopping me. Yes, ah. I mean, literally they're stopping me. And they're holding me. I mean, it's like, what the heck, you know? It's like, yeah. oh, wow. And they said to me, if I was your age, and then they proceeded to tell me what they would do. Yeah, I would. Yeah? If I was your age, I would. And then they proceeded to tell me what they would do. This was the most incredible thing. At first, I'm like, okay, I'm very polite. And I'm also very honest. So I really yeah. listened to them. But it was truly anomalous and it really grabbed me. Now, at that time, I hadn't yet fully understood anomalies. It took a little while. So this went on for about two weeks, right? Like every night, at least one person would do this. I mean, it was regular, right? And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Now I realize this is not typical. I mean, one time, nope. okay, it's an exception to, well, all right. It's, you know, it's like still a little bit weird, but when, after it gets to about five or six or seven, you know, must have been about 10 times, but I think about seven, eight times from there, I started to pay attention. And then I, I really thought about what they were saying to me. Now, they weren't just telling me what they would have done when they were my age, right? Yeah. Uh, they must have seen something in me, my earnestness or whatever, uh, because they really, this was something that, they, and they all grabbed me in the same way. That was the fascinating thing. It's like, they don't know each other from anywhere. They're from all over different parts of the world, but they grab me yeah. the same way because that's the only way you can really stop me. You know what I mean? When you're sitting down there, right? Anyway, and so they told me what they would have done as if they were young. And so I, I really thought about it. I thought about it in conceptual terms, abstract, and, and put it together. What was the theme here? The theme was they were lamenting their lost youth. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Lamenting it, yeah. They were lamenting, Let's and there see. was a regret, a deep regret in all of them that they had not done what they really, truly wished to do. Wow. Yeah? They had not true. followed their hearts, in other words. Yeah? And they saw this in me. Yeah, I'm in this busy restaurant, but somehow they must have been able to see that I wanted more. That, uh, because by that time, you know, 
I'd long since been working on my own philosophy and thinking, and it's like, oh, man, I had my own world going on. And, and, and the restaurant business is very consuming. I mean, it takes I can imagine. nine o'clock till one, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's, it's like, that's all I did, you know. And uh, it was just, they, they saw that this was not the right place for me. Now, whether they saw it or not, I don't know. But nonetheless, it's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. And now when you start to pay attention, this is completely and utterly anomalous. I mean, if it hadn't happened to me, I'm like, yeah, right. You know, this sounds like fiction, right? I mean, yeah. it doesn't sound real. Yeah, it was like, people don't do this kind of thing. Well, they, I got news for most people. People do a lot of things that we don't think that people do, right? <laughs> you know, we say, oh, but people don't do this kind of thing. Well, they do a lot of things that we don't think they do at any rate. So now when you see it as an anomaly, and I really thought about this. And from that, I decided yeah. to get out of the restaurant. I paid attention to that anomaly, right? Wow. Now, getting out of the restaurant was very difficult. Like I said, it was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my entire life, right? Getting out of that. And this led to a wonderful chain of events. Right? And this is a long, long magical story of how things work, yes? And, you know, uh, from there, I ended up coming here to America and changing everything. And uh, that was the start of a most magical adventure. I've got mm. uh, long, long, long stories of all the magic that resulted from that decision. It was very, very powerful. Uh, the, the gift of intent now, so, so we had decided to leave already, but just to, just to finish that story. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, the person I was with at the time who was in the restaurant business with me, you know, I, so I just, I said, you know, I want to leave, get out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, and then we're discussing what to do and how to go. So we were down on the beachfront, uh, very much kind of like where you are now, yeah. but there's beach there. Your, your background doesn't have beach to it. Well, anyway, down on the beachfront <laughs> and it's a big promenade over there. And, and it was midweek and it was, it was, it was fairly quiet there wasn't much going on and uh and and we saw this little pamphlet so mm. pamphlet like just falling to the ground and like it, that when we saw it, it, it in my eye it was just falling to, like where did this come from because it wasn't a windy day it was still it was quiet right and litter in that there was no litter there i know in some cities in america litter is just part of the deal right especially in new york right <laughs> I mean, it's sort of accepted, right? Yeah, but there so was no is. litter in that. This was, and pamphlets like that were, were rare, uh, very rare. I, I'd never seen mm. one similar to it. So all of a sudden, this pamphlet just appears, and it's falling to the ground as oh. we notice it, right? Like we, we thought, well, maybe it blew from somewhere, but there wasn't any wind to blow. But I could, okay, it doesn't matter. We go and look at the pamphlet. It's already now our interest is alerted because, again, it's anomalous, right? <laughs> yes. And in this pamphlet, it, it was all about your heritage. And, and, and But when we looked at, at the abstract, it was saying, you know, follow your heart, follow your passion, do what's right for you, etc. I mean, it was, it was a profound confirmation yeah. decision to leave the restaurant, right? Oh. And it was just, it was too incredible. I, I wrote about it in detail in, in the Gift of Intense Story. But now I, I'm touching on attunement. When you're paying attention to anomalies, Anomalies are really crucial here because there's something to pay attention to and understand with anomalies, right? This is part of the language of conceptionality. And anomalies, what I mean with anomaly, it has extra meaning to the typical word. Yes, it means something out of the ordinary, not typical, you know. But also, when we understand spiritual anomalies, yep. the key to understanding is that they are always intimately connected to you personally personally right to your deepest desires intents yeah your own mourners what you truly want what's right for you and when you when you pay attention via that understanding th those anomalies are the most incredible thing ever because it's like they know your insides but what you really really want not what you think you want yes which is a very big difference right we think we want a lot of things but then you get it and you're like you know mm. Maybe not, maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know. Uh, again, coming back to midlife crisis, this is what happens with people in midlife crisis when they realize their goals don't really fulfill their deep spiritual desires. Anomalies 
are always connected to your deep spiritual mourners, to what's truly, truly, truly right for you, yeah? what is truly, truly appropriate for you, and what, what will raise you, enhance you, and connect you to mourners. And now when you start to listen to anomalies and pay attention to them and, and start to just pay attention to the flow of things around you in this this context, this light, this awareness from this particular perspective, you start to see things very differently, right? Mm -hmm. And now things become incredibly, incredibly magical because you are living in tune, in harmony, in conjunction with the world. And of course, your life gets a lot easier as well, right? Sure now, this is the magic of attunement. This is the magic of attunement. And it, it's, it's just a shift, just a shift. It's a, you don't have to change your whole life necessarily. But if you start paying attention, those little things will come that will add to your life, change your life. And it doesn't mean you have to have a profound upheaval life change like me. I went from the restaurant to living in the desert for a while and then on a mountain and all sorts of adventures. You don't have to have that, not necessarily. You know, uh, it all depends on individual circumstances. But if you truly, truly pay attention to attunement and to anomalies, especially. That would be, yeah. Always, say again. No, that's that would be it. And I thought we had to yeah. be in again. I'm sorry, it's our next guest in the waiting room. Sorry, we didn't get to uh, no in. problem. No problem. We can oh. we can end it right there. All I'm saying is to end it, to tie it up, is pay attention to anomalies and attunement and you will get connected to living in mourners. Yep, and connected to that source. Whatever the source it is, but connected yes. to it. And you'll and... live in mourners and you'll have mourners all around you. And it's profoundly life enhancing. Profoundly life enhancing. All right. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jill. As always, we appreciate your time Thanks. here. How yes, can we contact yes. you? Uh, Nobelia.org slash connect. And thank you for listening so intently, Jill. Always. You, uh, your, your listening is fantastic. You yes. are. I mean, you're just, it's funny. Like you could just have your own show and just talk forever because what you're saying each and every time is different, unique, it's valuable, it's important, it's true to what we need to do to create that moreness, to create that um, attunement, as you say, to live our best life. Thank you for helping so many. And quick, the, the book, where do we find the book? Uh, on on Amazon, on Amazon. Ask Biella. The book is called Ask Biella. You can Perfect. just thanks so much. Bye -bye. And send my regards to Bina. We'll talk next week. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.